Welcome back to Spork Syndicate. This is Tom. Time to have some fun. For the December Four Horsemen Invitational, I'm going to turn this Hot Wheels Nissan LB Super Silhouette into a taxi. I'm really excited about this build. First of all, because it's going to be a challenging one, and secondly, I'm this month's guest horseman. <laughs> Let's get to the build. This is a very cool casting, but how could such a tuned racing machine be even an Uber or a Lyft, much less a taxi? These are questions I always regret asking because they lead me down a rabbit hole of a lot of work. My mind refused to suspend disbelief, so I knew I had to combine the Nissan with another casting. I chose this Toyota minivan as a passenger cabin for the taxi. I already separated the interiors the way I'd like to combine them. Now, I just have to figure out how I'm going to do it. First things first, the castings go into the Citrus Strip Paint Stripper. Did some cutting off camera, but this is what I'm going for. Right now I'm grinding notches and literally cutting corners to fit things together. Had to lose the rear spoiler, but it created a nice trunk deck, which makes sense when you have a taxi. Need a place for luggage. The first batch of JB Weld brings together the front and rear halves of the taxi, as well as the rear fender flares and trunk. I use the screws as jacks to level everything. But wait, there's more. I cut the center out of the front fenders because this will be a three axle vehicle. My son Jackson asked me why and I answered, eh, because I think it'll look cool. I use brass square tubes for the frame. I already know the base is going to be styrene plastic, so I'm relying on the frame for support. Another mock-up of where I'm going. I'm reaching the end of a tube of JB Super Weld glue here. Had to wring the last of it out and apply it with a toothpick. But you can't beat that instant bond. While this applicator isn't all that bad, it can glue itself shut if stored on its side. An easy way to avoid this is to pop off the curing light at the bottom and stand the applicator straight up, either on the bench, shelf, or in a drawer.
I glue the second front axle in, and then discover it's not plumb with the one in front of it. A small square of thin styrene acts as a spacer, and we're back in business. Now we're rolling up front and in harmony. This thing is going to be pretty long once it's done. Another mock-up and we're on our way. To close gaps at the seam, I created identical styrene plastic patches. They tuck nicely behind the front doors and nest along the bottom of the Toyota, where the plastic trim completed the body. Some more JB Weld, now to mud the styrene patches. Kind of how you use spackle on drywalls. I also reinforce the roof seam and tease out the JB Weld to handle the change in widths. Even though it's quick dry JB Weld, I give it a night to fully cure. Time to fabricate the base. The Nissan's fender flares make great connection joints. I make notches and things start to come together. Filing and sanding the JB Weld into shape isn't easy. Check it out, I broke a file. Now I'm making cutouts for the rear fenders. I haven't fit the rear axle yet because I wanted to make sure the interior was built so I didn't have to rip things apart and reposition the axle. I've got things down to two main pieces, plus glass, so I'm happy. We've graduated from mock-ups to dry fits. Everything comes together, and I even have ground clearance bow to stern. And even though the tires are wrapped in Teflon tape for protection, <laughs> she's already a roller. Next up are twin turbo intakes, which I try to craft with a round file. After two or three split ends in a styrene tube, I introduce fire to the equation and melt the end, then hollow it out. It worked better than I thought. Oh yeah, I should close the gap in the hood and some more styrene tubes, this time crimped to create running boards to connect the wider fenders of the Nissan.
I also used a piece of foam to fill the engine bay. First time trying this and I like the result. To smooth things out, I slab a dab of the body with Bondo and then sand it down. Whoops, too much sanding. Some styrene reinforcement and we can move on. Paul at Diecast Graveyard walked me through some basic steps I was not taking, like giving your paint and reducer 10 minutes to emulsify. Since I have a tankless compressor, I now keep it indoors until I need to go out into the cold where my paint booth is. And now we're here with some bright neon colors. Yellow Cab Company is the most well known. I thought, what about Optic Yellow Cab Company? I need to check with Paul again. I'm guessing Bondo doesn't agree with the acrylic paints or something. After filing and sanding things into better shape, I reapplied white primer and then used a white paint pen to get the stubborn spots that were showing through. And it worked. While that dried, I went to work on the interior. I wanted everything to be gaudy and bright. It's on brand for the Optic Yellow Cab Company. Made some decals to not only provide details, but to cover up any off lines or seams. Instead of a badge, I used QR codes. Thought that would make sense in today or in the near future. Silver for the headlights. Chose to leave them that way, it, it just worked. The taillights needed to be clipped and glued in, but since they're clear, I chose to paint them on the inside, less chance of paint chipping. Plus, I think it looks authentic. I love this taxi. It's got power, handling, and room for half a dozen passengers. Thanks to the Four Horsemen for having me as their guest this month. For Paul at Diecast Graveyard and Andrew at Maple Leaf Customs, this is Tom for Spork Syndicate, 
wishing all of you a fantastic 2024.